distinguished participants, and ladies and gentlemen. It's reckoned that the number of people globally who have no access to the internet is 2.6 billion people. This statistic has been quoted at a few occasions this year at the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos in January, and more recently in Geneva at the annual meeting of the International Telecommunication Union Council in June. This translates to one third of the global population who are in digital darkness. This calls for urgent action. Telecommunication regulators must be at the forefront of initiating dynamic regulatory interventions to ensure that this number of unconnected people reduces rapidly. Access to the internet is no longer a luxury. It has become an absolute necessity, denial of which means denial to essential services like education, medical care, financial inclusion, to mention but a few. Connectivity does not function as a lone ranger. For connectivity to have impact, we must ensure that the appropriate and relevant content exists. Once that is tackled, the looming question we have to answer is, do our respective stakeholders have the capability of understanding and relating with the content that have been designed? Furthermore, there is need to ensure that affordable smart devices are available to enable optimal usage of the internet. United Nations Secretary General, His Excellency Antonio Guterres, said this past June that bridging that divide is not only an economic necessity, but a moral and humanitarian imperative. And I totally agree. We therefore welcome you to Uganda, the part of Africa, where we'll be discussing regulating for impact as we look at the economic, social, political, and moral necessity of bridging the digital divide. We can see how digital connectivity has shifted from being a luxury to an absolute necessity by looking at how so many services as well as new products are available online. The lack of connectivity curtails not only the socioeconomic development of individuals, but it cascades upwards and affects the entire nation. We, can talk, we cannot talk of poverty reduction and sustainable development without interrogating how these can be impacted by enhanced and global usage of the internet. Our young people, most so in sub-Saharan Africa, are yearning for enhanced connectivity, as they have become increasingly aware that the opportunities we have been denied for centuries, we can catch up on through global connectivity. The young people want to punch above their weight. They want to do things differently, and the internet holds the key to this so we must not betray their dreams. As well as all of us here know, lack of connectivity affects several dimensions of our existence as humans. It affects us from getting out of poverty. It affects us from accessing key information. It affects us from civic engagement and participation. We are in the race against time because the technological advancements are progressing at a dizzying speed, and it is honestly far easier and more effective for us to engage in digital inclusion initiatives now than playing a catch-up game at a later stage. Time really is of essence. The fact that we are gathered here in Kampala, Uganda, speak to a collective commitment to regulate for impact and bridge this digital divide. Our convening here shows that we espouse the shared belief that access to the internet is now a right and not a luxury, as it once was. The range of topics that will be discussed illustrate the breadth and depth of what the, we grapple with in the communication regulatory space. From digital regu regulation to executive roundtable discussions on charting the course of transformative technologies, from development issues and private sector to high-level ministerial panel discussions on maximizing digital opportunities for impact, these are just the tip of the iceberg on the areas in which we want to make 
an impact. GSR24 presents us with an opportune platform to dialogue, to not only gain and share insights and best practices on current issues, but to also brainstorm on technological advancements as well as challenges we anticipate in the near future. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the only way that we can achieve our goal of making an impact in our sector, which is also linked to us achieving the sustainable development goals, is through collaboration. Without collaboration, all our individual efforts, as admirable and ambitious as they are, at making an impact on the different stakeholders we serve will remain a siloed effort. Collaboration is our only viable solution. So what does collaboration look like for us? I believe collaboration entails two-way, frequent and dynamic communication among its governments, the private sector, civil society, telecommunications regulators, and the average citizen. We need to adopt a collaborative approach to formulating policies that are inclusive and make significant investments in building the infrastructure that will lead to the unconnected populations receiving connectivity and also being effectively empowered on using the various digital tools available. Our ultimate goal, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is for digital inclusion and digital equity, a connected world where each individual can purposefully thrive in a digital era. While we task ahead of us is bridging the digital divide, seems immense, it seems so, only because we are looking at it through individual lenses. What makes this challenge surmountable is if we look at it through a collaborative lens. What this task requires of us is vision, focus, and determination. We applaud the private sector, which has driven connectivity efforts at speeds never anticipated some 30 years ago. It is incumbent on the governments and regulators to ensure that these efforts are rewarded through dynamic physical incentives. On the part of the private sector, we expect dynamic product development that will ensure quick connectivity and of, of the unconnected. There is no forensic science in this. It just makes good business sense. Let us use GSR24 as an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to regulating for impact. I'd like to once again warmly welcome you to Kampala, Uganda. You'll have an opportunity to experience our warm and hospitable nature here at Mnyonyo, as well as beyond the confines of this conference. Whatever little time you save, ensure that you stroll around the Kampala and even beyond. At the end of the conference, after we have mapped how to partake enhanced regulating for impact, you also agree with us that indeed Uganda in the pearl of Africa. Let the conversation begin for God and my country.